Hello, people watching vehicle reviews on the internet. Welcome to this, the 2024 Audi Q8 e-tron. As an owner of the original Ur Quattro, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited to finally have an Audi in the garage to review for all of you. Today, I'm gonna get this thing up in the air. We're a nerd out in the tech specs, see how it is constructed, hopefully not get squished in the process because this thing's heavy, and then go give it the beans. All right, out there. Look at this rear diffuser. Hmm. The Q8 e-tron utilizes an all aluminum in construction, five link multi-link rear suspension, Volkswagen Auto Group FOMO 5058675309. Paired with adaptive air suspension and a strange looking bladder boot. That sounds like a, a global leader name. I am Chancellor Bladder Boot of Narnia. <laughs> a little plastic aero shield. And paired with Chancellor Blatterboot is also a Sox damper. Rear anti bar measures in at, that's stout, 29 millimeter in diameter. The Q8 e-tron is built upon Volkswagen Audi Group's MLB Evo platform, and this one, as equipped with the Prestige package, weighs in at 5,798 pounds. Thanks to this massive 114 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, and not one, but two asynchronous electric motors with integrated reduction gear, single speed transmissions. In the rear, you have the AKA 320 coaxial axle drive unit. It has a two stage planetary gear differential. Coaxial axle essentially just means that the axle goes through the unit. And up front here is the APA 250 parallel axle drive unit. And because 250 is a smaller number than 320, that's common sense for the fact that this is a rear biased quattro system. Up front, there is another five link, multi-link, all aluminum and construction suspension with a dual ball joint configuration. That's a big fucking break. Dual ball joints up top also, in addition to the air bladder for the adaptive air suspension. Is it like the fifth element? No, it doesn't work. Made in France, hmm, like my ancestors. This is kind of neat. Oh, the cooling fan up in there for the heat exchangers. Front anti-sway bar. That's some rugged, hairy cardboard. That's kind of like hairy plastic almost. 30 millimeter. This is a heavy vehicle. The front chin spoiler. Yep, that'll take a good hit. That's some good quality plastic right there. It's got actual metal Torx bits, no plastic pop clips. All right, time for the braking test. No one behind me. Ready? Go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was aggressive. The stopping distance wasn't as short as I thought it was going to be with how big the brakes are, but this is a heavy vehicle. And I think it just elevated my blood pressure because my throat is tight. I'm not a doctor. Clearly. That braking was just made possible thanks to an enormous six piston caliper with a 399 millimeter or 15.7 inch front rotor. The wheels, they are a 21 by nine and a half with a positive 36 millimeter offset aero disc. And this is actual aluminum too. It's not some crappy fake plastic hubcap like you get on some electric vehicles. They're wrapped in a rather wide set of 265-45 Continental Cross Contact All Season Tires. I've been chewing on my hair the whole time I was talking about that. Weird. The inner fender liner looks like a turtle's abs. Intelligently designed jack pad locations with a little arrow even to let you know where it is. I like these side skirts. It's good looking, subtle. Out back, the brakes get considerably smaller with a little single piston floating caliper and a 350.5 millimeter or 13.8 inch rotor. The wheel and tire, same size as you get up front. In the name of science, I shall now give this thing the e-beans. Bolstering assessment. Good, it's got good bolstering. 
The seats are heated and ventilated as well as the steering wheel is heated, but I found it odd that on the quick access menu down below on the climate control, there's one for the seat for heat and ventilation, but there isn't one for the steering wheel. But yet when you turn on the seat heat, your steering wheel heats appropriately for you. If you tap up here, you can adjust them as well. What? Are you serious? This thing had massage the entire time? I didn't know that. Oh, wow. This is a good massage. This one's kind of firm. I like this. That's amazing. What is this over here? Both the passenger and a driver are massage. As far as drive modes go, touch that screen and I can go from dynamic to auto to comfort to efficiency, all road and even off road and then individual. Individual allows you to adjust the drive, suspension, steering, and that's it. Also next to the drive select mode area, there is a button for traction control and I can put it into sport mode or hold it down fully and fully defeat ESC. Now, if I just simply put this thing into drive, I have 355 horsepower on tap. If I do it again into sport mode, you'll see my power meter then goes past 100% and it shows boost. That's for the full 400 plus horsepower. So with that said, let's see what this thing can do. Ready? Go. Okay. It's definitely quicker in boost mode. It's not as much dramatic off the line as I thought it would be. It still it still gets up and goes though. It's not slow. Not bad. Pop the hood, please. This thing looks so sick. Before I go any further, just look at the nose of this thing. That does not look like an SUV. That looks like a hot hatch. Hey, that's a pretty light hood and it's got hood struts. Underneath the front of the 2024 Audi Q8 e-tron is one of two asynchronous induction electric motors. This front one produces 189 horsepower and 228 pound-feet of torque at zero RPM because it's an electric motor. Out back, you have a slightly more powerful electric motor producing 231 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque, giving you a total combined system output of 402 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque. Inside the front cubby, lift this up. Oh, there's that plug. I was wondering where this was. It's like a floor mat. Does it lift? It does. Oh, there's the jack and the little inflator for your tire if you get a flat. It has a light to illuminate it. Foam weather stripping to keep crap from getting in there. You could put bananas in this compartment. You can see that front electric motor inverter mounted front and center right up top. Oh, that's crazy. That's actually the top of the strut tower right there. That is so inverted. No wonder this thing handles good. There's a massive aluminum brace between the two strut towers. Also another brace up here that goes underneath the wiper cowl. This is an example of the build quality of why I like Audi products. Like look how detailed just this hood latch is. They could have made this out of a piece of cheap stamped steel, but no. It's like got this individual little loop that is replaceable. No way, my 8NTT had almost the same setup on its battery. That's crazy, you can tell this is an Audi just by the way that it is. Even though you can't see it under the sea of plastic right here, there are several heat exchangers as well as the AC condenser because the stator, the bearing plate, as well as the rotor are all liquid cooled in addition to the battery. And also for the rear electric motor for 2024, that has been upgraded. Essentially it just means it makes more torque with less required energy to produce it. All right, let's take this thing for a rip. My personal favorite part about driving an electric vehicle is the instantaneous torque shove you get right off the line. And you don't really get that with this. Granted, this is not the S model, that is the performance version, but still, it lacks that instantaneous, almost uncomfortable shove of torque down low. And it feels like it's synthetically removed, calculated with computers and robots to not upset the tummies of rich moms that drive these. This does have a very good mid-range linear torque shove to it. Just 
pushing the throttle right there, that's nice. You get that full shove of torque, and especially in sport mode, you get the full effect of it. Handling wise, for as heavy as this thing is, it handles deceptively well. I, all right, I was not expecting that. You can feel the weight when you hit little dips and bumps in the road, but not as noticeable as I thought it would be. Oh yeah. That's good. Man, I can only imagine how much better the performance version would be. Even though these are all season tires, you still get a lot of bite out of them. I mean, it is a 265, it's not a narrow tire, but again, the weight. I wish I was in a snowy environment so I could test out the Quattro system and also see how the battery pack reacts to cold temperatures, extreme cold temperatures. Pop, is that actually? That's actually metal. The non-sport back model for as small as this thing feels when you're driving it, it's got a pretty good sized rear storage area. Little baskets on the side you can store some biscuits in and that is so soft. Little lever to ejecto seat cuz and also it's got little LED bar lights back here in the storage area. It's a lot nicer than I thought it was gonna be back here. It's all suede on the door. I like the two-tone gray suede. Some nets in the back of the seats. Well, that's weird, it's like, Soft plastic. It's got a little foldy sheety boy. Wow. Every vehicle I've ever reviewed that had these little sliders, they just feel cheap like they'd break. This one doesn't. The little latching mechanism at the top feels well built. Actually has rear illuminated door, so that's actually aluminum. I got my own screen back here for the rear seat controls. That's the nicest cup holder I've seen in a back seat of a vehicle. I like that. Wait. Oh, weird. The whole thing folds down in the middle. I mean, you could use that as an armrest if you're weird. The rear foot wells in the back seat are also illuminated, as well as I got my own ambient lighting. Does my seat recline? No, it folds. It doesn't recline. I'm gonna ding you on that because the Forester has reclining rear seats. That's sick. I just noticed that the seat belt actually illuminates around the very outside of it so you can find it at night. Oh no, it's got child safety locks. Good thing this door is open. I like how the center console has this little hidden tray down inside here that if you slide it, it opens up some cup holders and a piece of a straw wrapper. There's also a wireless phone charger tucked over here on the side. You can enable your cameras right here and this is for the park assistance feature for robots to park the car for you. This over here is because Tony Stark likes Audis, so this is a uh, force field that enables Jarvis. They also give you a little volume knob that you can push to the side to change your station. Because this thing has robots that'll park it for you, it also has a 360 degree camera. I don't know if this is intentional, but the vehicle is the correct color. The huge moonroof in this thing. As far as infotainment and climate goes, it's very clean in here. You have an upper screen for the infotainment and an almost equally sized lower screen just for the HVAC and climate control and seats. In addition to the Bang & Olufsen sound system being good, the fact that this car is so well insulated definitely helps. And the style of those two center screens match nicely with the gauge cluster also. Zoom way out in my navigation to see what part of Earth I'm in. Whoa, weird, why is there a little circle around me? That's as far out from Earth as I can go. It has a news feature in case you wanna be miserable while you're driving. As far as Chancellor Blatter Boots suspension goes, Goes. If I press the drive select button, there comes up in the right corner, it says raise. Ooh, it's lowering. Why didn't I know about this earlier? I would have slammed this thing on its ass the whole time I was driving it. Oh, it's raising. I'm an idiot. I thought it was lowering. It's raising. There we go. We're going to level five. There we go. Vehicle's lifted. As far as nighttime driving goes, the ambient lighting that is in the interior, Mercedes up to this day has been my favorite as far as the look of the ambient lighting because they just they knock it out of the park with how much lighting there is. There's a couple different color themes that you can select from in here, or you can go to individual, surface, colors. Oh geez, you can fully customize the colors of your interior. They got Mercedes beat in this department. This is crazy. It feels like the first time you watch the remake of the Tron movie with the, the lights all around the cycles and stuff. That's what it feels like on the inside of here and it's fitting because it says e-tron on the dash. This thing's chock full of safety features and most of the robot safety aids do a fairly good job at making it non-intrusive and just kind of seamless and 
guide you along safely, except for the lane keep assist. That one's straight up aggressive. As far as electrical efficiency and range goes, I would have liked to see a little bit more range out of this, but I mean, we're only a few years away from electric cars having quite a bit more range, so it's whatever. My charge cable, oh, it does have a spare. This right here is absolutely genius. So the charging door, you push a button, it opens, it's robotic, that's kind of cool. But what happens if your cord doesn't reach this side of your vehicle and you don't want to have to back in or pull in? Well, somebody thought of it because the other side of the vehicle has an identical receptacle to plug in your charge cable. Now, as far as charge times go, I'm gonna put a little chart on the screen for you to read and see what they are. Charging ended, showing 244 miles of range because it is temperature dependent. Uh, efficiency wise goes, if you keep this thing in sport mode and you're constantly in boost, you can just watch the miles drop on your range quickly. It'll suck the juice down quick. It's kind of the same thing as if you were driving an internal combustion engine with gasoline. Same, same. It is now time for me to talk into a foam finger and give this thing some scores. Starting with the bean score, the assessment of the feeling you get in your belly button when you give it the beans. And this 2024 Audi Q8 e-tron gets a rating of? Next is the cookie score, the assessment of value, and this loaded Prestige Launch Edition Q8 e-tron in the mid 90s gets a rating of? Next is the wrench score, the assessment of ease of maintenance for you RC car technicians out there. And this is getting a rating of? It's all relative to your skill level, I guess. Next is the squid score, the assessment of I almost fell over, and this QA e-tron gets a rating of? And lastly is the penguin score, the assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle, and this is getting a rating of? As far as EVs aging goes, this one will definitely score top marks in the looks department because Audi knows how to build a timeless styled vehicle. So I hope you guys enjoy this review. I'll see you soon with another. Bye.